So what did we talk about last time? The idea is that we have an experiment, and the experiment has a sample space, omega. And then somebody comes and tells us that you know the outcome of the experiment happens to lie inside this particular event B. Given this information, it kind of changes what we know about the situation. It tells us that the outcome is going to be somewhere inside here. So this is essentially our new sample space. And now we need to reassign probabilities to the various possible outcomes. Because, for example, these outcomes, even if they had positive probability beforehand, now that we're told that B occurred, those outcomes out there are going to have zero probability. So we need to revise our probabilities. The new probabilities are called conditional probabilities, and they're defined this way. The conditional probability that A occurs, given that we're told that B occurred, is calculated by this formula, which tells us the following. Out of the total probability that was initially assigned to the event B, what fraction of that probability is assigned to outcomes that also make A to happen? So out of the total probability assigned to B, we see what fraction of that total probability is assigned to those elements here that will also make A happen. Conditional probabilities are left undefined if the denominator here is, uh, is zero. Easy consequence of the definition is if we bring that term to the other side that we can find the probability of two things happening by taking the probability that the first thing happens and then given that the first thing happened, the conditional probability that the second one happens. Then we saw last time that we can divide and conquer in calculating probabilities of a mildly complicated event by breaking it down into different scenarios. So event B can happen in two ways. It can happen either together with A, which is this probability, or it can happen together with A complement, which is this probability. So basically, we are saying that the total probability of B is the probability of this, which is A intersection B, plus the probability of that, which is A complement intersection B. So these two facts here, the multiplication rule and the total probability theorem, are basic tools that one uses to break down probability calculations into simpler parts. So we find probabilities of two things happening by looking at each one at a time. And this is what we do to break up a situation into different possible scenarios. Then we also have the Bayes rule which does the following. Given a model that has conditional probabilities of this kind, the Bayes rule allows us to calculate conditional probabilities in which the events appear in different order. You can think of these probabilities as describing a causal model of a certain situation, whereas these are the probabilities that you get after you do some inference based on the information that you have available. Now, the Bayes rule, we derived it, and it's a trivial half-line calculation, but it underlies lots and lots of useful things in the real world. We had the radar example last time. You can think of more complicated situations in which there is a bunch or lots of different hypotheses about the environment. Given any particular setting in the environment, you have a measuring device that can produce many different outcomes. And you observe the final outcome of your, out of your measuring device, and you're trying to guess which particular branch occurred. That is, you're trying to guess the state of the world based on a particular measurement. That's what inference is all about. So real world problems only differ from the simple example that we saw last time in that this kind of tree is a little more complicated. You might have infinitely many possible outcomes here and so on. So the setting up the model may be more elaborate, but the basic calculation that's done based on the Bayes rule is essentially the same as the one that we saw.